Welcome to episode 2 of my Merlin 128 series. In today's video, we are covering the basics of setting up your environment for the Vice Simulator for use with 80 column mode. We will then move on to loading the software, and then the majority of this video will be covering Merlin 128's main menu options. I've decided to use emulation rather than physical hardware for this YouTube series simply because it's a bit more convenient to do it that way. So let's jump right in. The first thing that you will need in order to follow along is the Vice Emulator. And this is the URL to download it. As of this video, the latest version available to download is version 3.8. After downloading, make sure it is unzipped and create a shortcut to the X128 file, which resides in the bin folder. Double clicking the EXE will start the emulator. This one's a little different in that it opens two windows, one for 40 column mode and one for 80 column mode. We'll be spending most of our time in the 80 column mode. And Vice, down here at the bottom, you have a button for 80 column mode. So if you push that button, and then if you do a reset, it will switch over to 80 column mode. And that's where we're going to be spending most of our time. So I'm going to do that. So you go down here and reset. CPU. And you see when it does that, it restarts and opens up. And then after that, the other screen sort of remains blank. We won't be using that. Then there's a few settings that were important to me to make sure in order to use the software that we need to look at before proceeding. The first setting I wanted to look at is in preferences settings. And we're going to go to input devices keyboard now here for me to for this to work properly it's a little tricky depending upon if you're using a mac or a, a pc depending upon what kind of system you're using but i i'm using a windows pc i've tried a, a few different options here but right now i'm just for this video i'm going to stick to positional this seems to allow most of the keys to work as long as you know what they are in the keyboard and we'll get into that later more into that later then the next option that I wanted to cover is if you don't like the, the color layout, depending upon how it looks for you, you have the ability to come in here and you can switch the palette. So you could kind of switch to different color layouts. So, so you see when I switch it, it went white right there. But I'm sort of leaving it on this, and then on the CRT side, you can actually adjust the brightness and things like that which I had to do a little bit for this next part that we're going to get into when we start the software. So those are the two main settings. And then what you're going to want to do after you make the changes to those is go up here and save your settings and you won't get that annoying pop-up that you get. Well, it says it won't go away until you save your settings the first time. And so that's the sort of the, all the configuration that you need so far that I've used. Now what we want to do is go ahead and locate and download the Merlin 128 software. And where I was able to find it is from this URL. I don't know if I'm allowed to post the link, but you could also just go on Google and look for Merlin 128 and try to find places to download it on Google. And it's fairly easy to find. And this one also has a link to the manual. Once you've downloaded and unzipped it, you're going to want to go up on file and go attach disk image. And I'm using drive eight. Mine's already in the proper location, but you can navigate to it by clicking the drives on the left and then go to the path. Mine's located in the ROMs folder, C64, Merlin 128. Once I get to here, you also have the option to auto start the software, which I think is a nice feature. So I'm going to click that. And then right away, you'll see it says Booting Merlin, and then by Glenn E. Breeden. Breedon. And you see, because I changed some of the colors, now we have it as yellow. I'm going to go back in, and I think I probably went with the wrong one. I like brown better for now. I'm kind of used to this brown, although yellow did stick out pretty good. I did, it did look pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it that way and save the settings. All right, before I go to showing what some of the commands do in Merlin, I wanna go in and show you what my disk drive settings are set to. And the first thing you'll notice is that I have 
drive sound emulation checkbox checked and then also we're set to the CBM 1571 disk drive and then I have true drive emulation checkbox checked and then you'll notice here you can adjust the volume and I have it low even though it's low it does seem to be loud when it initiates if you do need to make changes to that you just go in and you save be sure to save your settings afterward you will notice the, when you hit C for catalog, it displays the disk contents. Now, if you go back in and if we change this back to 1541, and I think when we do that, we have to reload, reattach our image. So when you reattach the image, and then you do catalog, notice the speed. It's, it's subtle, but there is a speed difference between using the 1541 drive and the 1571. It's not subtle when, you, when that's the only disk drive that you have. So you definitely, when you're using a Commodore 128, it is preferable, in my opinion, to use the 1571 disk drive. and then save your settings. And just to illustrate, we'll catalog it one more time. Now what's on the disk is the Merlin 128 program, and then there's a, there's a few utilities, and in addition to that, there's some demos, and I, since there was a few blocks free, I made some copies of the demos so that I can play around, and, and I named them Glenn. After you've done a catalog, you just hit return to return to the main menu. All right, the first thing I want to show is that once you know what's on the disk and you know the name of the program you want to load in, anything with an extension of .s is your source code. The .o is the object code. So I'm going to load in my test program by typing the letter L. So I'm going to load in glenn.s and you don't have to put in the extension in order to load it in. You notice it appends it. Merlin 128 then brings you to the editor automatically. And from here, there's a few commands you can do. And I'm only going to show you a few right now. E to edit to go into the editor. The most basic things you can do is use your arrow keys up, down, left, and right to move around. And you can edit the source code from here. But before we get into the source code and the commands, we're going to go back, we're going to jump back out by hitting Commodore and the left arrow on your keyboard, which will bring you back to this colon prompt. And you can then hit Q to get back to the menus. So I was just showing that you can load in your source code into the editor, editor by using the L command. If you no longer need that source code, you could do N for new. And you have the option to delete the source from memory. If you say yes, it will wipe it out. Well, we're, we're not going to do that just yet. If we were to do E to go back to the editor and then E once again and just make a simple change, say we'll get rid of test right here and put a two or, or something like that. Then do control left arrow. And from here, say we wanted to save this change. We go back to the menus with a Q and we can hit S to save our source. <clears throat> so you'll see you get an error message that the file already exists. But what you can do, you can either scratch the file with a, a command, with the X command, but Merlin 128 has a built-in feature when you're saving. If you insert an at colon and then the file name, it will Find that file on the disk, delete it first, and then save your new file in its place. And so if we hit catalog, you'll see the file is there still. And if we go, if we do, if we were to do new to delete our source code, so notice we don't have anything in our editor, and then load that file. You'll see it now has 
the, the new version saved on the disk. So I'm hitting Control, or Commodore left arrow, Q. So Merlin128 has an ability to append a file to the current source code in your editor by using the letter A. If you were to append, if you wanted to append a file, you just hit A and then the file name, and it adds the .s extension. We go to E for editor, and now you'll notice that we have two copies of it in memory. So this is a nice feature if you ever needed to add source from another file. We go Control, Commodore, left arrow, Q. You can similarly do the same thing with the read text file and write text file. And all of these commands, again, are outlined in the PDF manual or in the manual. Let's do new, delete all of our source. Let's do R to read in a text file. And then let's read in glenn.s, for example. You'll notice it reads it in, uh, and then if if we if we needed to add something to the end, and then we read in text file again, let's we'll see what that does. Best way is just kind of go in and experiment a while, experiment around, and you'll notice that it appends similar to the append. Now let's do new. All right, so let's do a catalog again. And then notice the file types. The ones that are labeled SEQ are the text files, whereas the PRG are your source code. So let's load in one of the text files by doing the read command. We'll type R. And let's load in pi.names. You'll notice when you do the read, it brings you into the editor and you type E to edit the text file. And you know, this isn't something that you would compile, it's just maybe some notes and that sort of thing. Now, if we wanted to, we could go back to the menu by hitting Control, left arrow, or Commodore, left and arrow, and then Q. And if we want to, we can write this out by doing W so we could save it under a different name. So let's go GRD text F <laughs> and then let's write that out. So it's a GRD text file. Let's do a catalog and let's see if it's on this page. You'll notice there it is GRD text F four blocks SEQ. So that is the read and write command. And just quickly looking at the manual, for the write command, it writes a Merlin 128 file to a text file instead of a binary file. The write command does not delete or scratch first. And so we can use that trick, the at colon, before the file name to do that. On the read text file, this command reads text files into Merlin 128. They are always appended to the current buffer. To clear the buffer and start fresh, use the new source command. If no file is in memory, the name given will become the default file name. Appended reads will not do this. When the read is complete, you are placed into the editor. If the file contains lines longer than 255 characters, they will be divided into two or more lines by the read command. The file will be read only until it reaches high mem and will produce a memory error if it goes beyond. Only the data read to that point will remain. The read text file and write text file commands are used to load or create put files or to access files from other assemblers or text editors. So that is basically the reason why you would use the read or write text commands. Now you can change your drive letter by doing a D and then hit enter. And you can change the drive letter. If you had a drive nine, you could put it there. The next thing is to save your object code. So let's, let, let's load in our, our little demo. Uh, once once again and let's compile it the command to compile what you do is you hit control left arrow and then type ASM and that will basically assemble your source code when it's done you'll hit Q let's hit O to save the object code 
and then let's put the at colon and then the file name. That way it will overwrite it. Then to run the program, we can type g run program. And this is a very simple program. All it does is it prints press return to exit and then all and it waits for you to hit the return key. And so that's how you run it. There is a machine code monitor. You can use M to enter the machine code monitor and it's very similar to the one that's built in device. And you can do uh, memory lookups from various areas of memory. And then when you're done, you can hit X to exit back to the menus. And then the next thing I wanted to show is if you just needed, for example, let's do a catalog. If you just needed to run a disk command and these commands are outlined in the manual. But the primary reason that you would use X, the disk command, is to scratch a program. So if you wanted to delete the object code for some reason or a source code, you can come in and you can do S colon and then the file name and then that will scratch it and if you do another catalog on it you'll see that the glenn.o is gone where it was there a few seconds ago you could also rename files using that command so it's a nice option to have let's demonstrate the rename so if you do x R colon the new file name let's go grd.s is equal let's get the right key here to the old file name glenn.s so in theory that should rename the file let's do a catalog to confirm yeah and you'll see there is now a grd.s instead of glenn.s. And now let's rename it back. So we'll go x r, r to rename glenn.s equal grd.s. Now you have to be careful not to put spaces before and after the equal sign. Otherwise this command does fail and now we have renamed the file back. When you're done editing your source, you've written your program and everything, you can quit back to basic by hitting the letter B to abandon Merlin completely and then hitting a, a Y. So then you're back into 128 mode. Okay, so those are some of the basic features of the main menu of Merlin 128. And in an upcoming segment, what I plan to do is to go into the editor and demonstrate as much as I can most of the features of the editor in greater detail. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one coming soon. Thanks for watching.